I am Cedar Gillette, um, enrolled member of the three affiliated tribes uh, in Western North Dakota. Uh, I am also um, Turtle Mountain Chippewa, and I used to be a domestic violence advocate here. The oil industry has taken over this land completely in every aspect. In our government, um, what our priorities are, um, it's more of we need to produce more oil than take care of the local people. Um, the quality of life here has gotten worse. Uh, people are scared to go out at night. Before the oil boom, there was no housing Hardly any housing, especially where I live. There was not even enough housing for tribal members. So when that influx of all these people come in, they didn't have anywhere to live, so they would either their oil company would provide makeshift housing, campers or trailers, or they would buy their own and put them together. And these oil workers would live there. But they're, but even the law enforcement doesn't know where these man camps are. Um, so if something happens, if, if a woman's taken or if someone's shot or if something violent happens, it's hard for the um, police to know, especially if it's a woman, um, because there's women that come here with their oil-related boyfriends, that oil workers, um, and they don't know this area. And I've come across people where um, something happened to them out there at a man camp, and they call 911, but the 911 can't tra triangulate where they're at, and they don't know this area, so they can't explain where they are. In this one instance, I was on call as a domestic violence advocate, and um, the police called me and told me to come to the station because they were going to go find this woman out there, and it took them two hours to find her. I believe there is a correlation between the treatment of the land and the treatment of women, that they are both expendable, that they can take whatever violence is given to them in both aspects. Um, and they're also taken for granted that, oh yeah, this is a resource, so we can just use it for land. And oh, that, you know, women aren't, whatever, it's just a woman. Like, she doesn't really matter. Especially Native women. When they're one in three, you know, the, that's the reported statistic of um, being sexual assaulted. But I know as a domestic violence advocate of people that didn't come to our program for help. In 2011, um, I was living on the Turtle Mountain Triple Reservation, um, and I got this email um, from Carol Davis, and she's a respected elder there, and she wanted to bring the women together for just to talk about the water, because she um, was afraid that oil production was going to happen on the reservation there, um, because it was starting 40 miles away in Botno. Um, so she wanted to reach out to the women because 
in Chippewa society, um, women were considered keepers of the water. We as a group of women decided, yes, we want to take that responsibility on. We wanted to write a tribal resolution to ban fracking. We started on November 2nd, 2011, and we presented to the tribal council um, who had the authority to accept our law. We weren't saying that the frackers were completely bad. Like, that's not the approach we did. We just said, we want to protect the water. And so far, what we've seen in other communities um, where there is water contamination from fracking, we don't see that it's a safe process. Then they had their own public meeting a few days later. So on November 22nd, they unanimously passed our ban. And we became the first tribe in the United States to ban fracking. If you're thinking about fracking, look at other people that have already been dealing with it. Research, um, cause it's not, because it's not going to be just about the money. All our leadership right now in North Dakota is telling us that oil is the greatest thing, fracking is the greatest thing since sliced bread, or you know, it's just, we, we have to embrace it and we, but we don't. We have a choice. That's what we're, we need to re-educate ourselves. You know, step back from it, what is really important to us. And I think if we came together and talked about it in a genuine way, well, you know, this is what I want for my future and my children's future. Um, and how can we do that right now?